Hello, and welcome to WePC. My name's Jack, and today we're going to be looking at the 12th Gen 12900K benchmarks. Sorry for my voice being absolutely atrocious, I am experiencing a bit of a cold at the minute. The i9-12900K is the newest CPU just released by Intel, having 16 cores and 24 threads. That is a very odd number, but basically we have 8 big cores and 8 little cores. The 8 little cores are non-hyper-threaded, and the 8 big cores are. This is the first desktop CPU from Intel to integrate ARM's little big technology. More on that in a later video. We are using the 12th gen on an ROG Maximus Hero Z690 motherboard with DDR5 4800MHz RAM from Polaris. With that being said, let's get into the benchmarks. So first up on the benchmarks then, we have Control in 1440p. Control is a pretty decently hard game to run, even for the latest hardware now. We've paired the i9-12900K with a 3090, just to make sure we're not bottlenecking anything. Control then, in 1440p, is still a decently hard game to run, although not very CPU intensive. Control gives us an average of 129 FPS, 1% 1 of 107, and 0.1s of 99. So we're going to switch over into 4K and see how that does. As you can see, we're absolutely maxing out the 3090, we're using its full potential right now. And the i9 is barely being used at all, it's really breezing through control completely. Control in 4K, giving us an FPS average of 68 FPS, 58 FPS for 1% and 0.1% of 28. Cyberpunk 2077 there, and Cyberpunk still is a horrible game to run. In 1440p here, we're pretty much sub 100 FPS all the time, with a maxed out RTX 3090. The 12900K is being used to about 50% capacity on Spike, and you can see the little and big cores dancing around. Not too sure if Cyberpunk's optimised for this kind of technology yet, but I'm sure that'll change in an update in the future. Cyberpunk giving us 99 FPS average, 84 FPS 1% and 0.1% of 81. In 4K then, as you can see, our FPS has dropped down to 71-ish, and the 3090 is still being used to its absolute full potential. Although for some reason, the i9 doesn't seem to be being used as much. A couple of percent less. Is this a bottleneck? I don't really think so. We do get a 69 FPS average in 4K, with 1% of 59 and 0.1% of 14. Not too bad. CSGO then, and CSGO can run on a potato, so it's no surprise to note that the FPS is well into the 300s. CSGO is a pretty strange game in its usage and hardware utilisation, but still we're having no trouble here. 354 FPS average with 1% of 119 and 0.1% of 29. Jumping over into 4K, you can see that the RTX 3090 is being completely utilised, and we've dropped a few FPS, just a bit more than 20. The RTX 3090 and 12900K in 4K giving us 318 FPS average, 1% of 146 and 0.1% of 51. Days Gone's up next. A decently hard to run single player title. Not too hard, but it's up there. 1440p giving us full utilisation on the 3090 and about a 20% utilisation on the 12900K. As you can see the cores are very interestingly bouncing around again. 141 FPS average, with 1% of 87 and 0.1 of 59. Days Gone in 4K then, dropping us down to about 88 FPS, maxing out the 3090's usage and cooking it quite well. We're on 75 degrees right now, that's pretty toasty. But the i9 again, making absolute short work of Days Gone. The i9 doesn't really care what you throw at it, it will chew through anything. 84 FPS average, 1% of 65 and 0.1s of 43. Far Cry 6 then, the newest game on our list. As you can see, the i9 is being utilised quite well. It's going up to about 30% usage. That's the highest we've really seen so far, besides Cyberpunk of course, that just uses everything it can all the time just because it can. Far Cry 6 then, not very well optimised, but still very playable in this configuration. 96 FPS average, 1% of 54, and 0.1s of 41. Now onto 4K, our FPS really drops down, but still stays above 60, which is completely playable in my eyes. We're getting about the same usage on the i9-12900K, which is to be expected. This is a pretty GPU intensive game, CPU not really so much. Regardless of that, we're getting a 66 FPS average, 1% of 49, and 0.1s of 36. 
Gas Station Simulator then. A notoriously badly optimised game. Although it is improving with updates, so if you were thinking about playing it, still get it. It's getting better and better every time they update it. The RTX 3090 going at full tilt here, and the 12900K hovering around 30% usage. Gas Station Simulator at 1440p, giving us an average of 125 FPS, 85 on the 1% and 33 on the 0.1% lows. Moving on to in 4K, we're hovering around the 75 FPS area, with the RTX 3090 again being used to its full potential, and the i9 experiencing top end usage of about 23%. Gas Station Simulator at 4K giving us 75 FPS, 1% of 56 and 0.1% of 29. New World. New World is a very interesting one. New World is very CPU intensive and also GPU intensive, but we do see a bottleneck here as both of the resolutions turn out about the same FPS. I'm not too sure what this is. Maybe we are GPU bottlenecked. Brave using the 3090, considering it's been cooking them. 1440p New World, giving us an average of 126 FPS, 1% of 72, and 0.1% of 57. New World in 4K then. As you can see, the RTX 3090 for some reason isn't working as hard as it was in 1440p, and neither is the CPU marginally. We did see a usage spike of 61% there, but that's not very often that happens. The core usage is dancing around about 50% on each core, and it's giving us an average of 127 FPS, 1% 1 of 80, and 0.1s of 67. Like I said, New World is a very strangely optimised game, not too sure if it knows what it's doing yet. Considering it was not long ago it was cooking 3090s, I'm not going to say it knows exactly what to do with an Intel 12th gen. Rust now. Rust is a very stuttery game by standard, and it's a multiplayer game, so I wouldn't be surprised to see low 0.1% and 1% here, but it is handling it pretty well. 1440p, we're getting about an average FPS of 127, which is not too bad. The RTX 3090 being used to about 75%, with the i9-12900K hovering around the 20% usage. So the final results are 126 FPS average, 1% of 89 and 0.1% of 58. Onto 4K now, taking a decent hit in FPS, we can see that the RTX 3090 is now completely loaded and the i9-12900K is seeing about the same usage. Rust isn't that great of an optimised game and I'm surprised it's only using this much of the CPU. The final benchmark results are 105 FPS average, 1% of 22 and 0.1% of 7. Ok now we're on to Cinebench, I did do a few tests in Cinebench R23 and took the median result, so I took the result in the middle and went with that, that way it's a real world data scenario and not a made up average. So with that being said, the i9-12900K does very very well in multi-core tests, giving us a score of 25,777 points in multi and 1,949 points in single. That is a very, very decent score. Single core performance still could be better, but multi-core is blisteringly fast. And finally, we're on Blender BMW benchmark. And this only took the 12900K 1 minute and 33 seconds. That might be the fastest CPU I've ever benchmarked. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This is my 12900K benchmark video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and go and check out what's on our channel already. We have plenty of 12900K and DDR5 benchmarks for you to watch and with more to come. If you have an idea on what you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments down below and we'll certainly try and make a video on it. This has been Jack from WePC. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.